Hey friends, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Down the Score. Today we are going to look at Green Finch and Limit Bird from Sweeney Todd the Musical. Let's look at the very beginning of this. All the flute stuff that you hear, they're supposed to represent birds. If you look at the beginning here at the first bar. Usually when we're looking at musicals, we have bar numbers here. And right now I have letter A. And letter A means measure A. And the reason we have letters is usually because this piece originally started at bar one. When you see letters instead of measure numbers, it's usually because in the production they added stuff or took away things. And you'll see that too in other shows where they'll have like measure 34A, 34B, 34C. They'll do that because they had to add materials and they don't want to change the bar numbers. So the very beginning of this, this is all, all supposed to sound like birds. And you have trills. And then we kick into time right down here. You know, we don't really talk much about dynamics, but this is supposed to have a push and pull. They're called hairpins. So the first one is a crescendo and the second one is a decrescendo. And it's supposed to give that feeling of motion because otherwise it's... We don't want that. Gives it a push, a push, 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 and pull. And then we have. So now, of course, it's on time. So there's no prettiness in this. You have. You would think. Something more tonal, but no. She's not happy. She's locked in a freaking cage like a bird. That's what this whole thing is about. Then she sings. Green finch and linnet bird, nightingale, blackbird, how is it you sing? Then you have the bird being imitated in the orchestra right here, usually with a flute or a piccolo. Uh, then we go to, uh, how can you jubilate sitting in cages? Again, it's sound time. It's not supposed to sound pretty. She's locked in a fucking cage, being trapped by Judge Turpin. So it's not going to be the same melody. It's going to sound off on purpose. How can you jubilate sitting in cages? All those half steps. There's a yearning in the melody, even without words. Outside the sky waits beckoning, beckoning. Again, that melody, look at this. Look at this melody. And in the bass, you have this D natural against the E flat, which gives it that tension that we always are hearing in song time that you really can't put your finger on, but you can, you can feel it. So she sings, Outside the sky waits beckoning, beckoning. And then you have a G natural against a G flat. So this is just riddled with clashing notes left and right. Thank you, Sondheim. Just be on the bars. Now, this is a theme we hear all the time. If you listen to uh, Kiss Me, which is a song in, in this between Joanna and Anthony, and you also have the Judge and the Beatles singing, it's a little quartet, this theme ba -da 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 comes up a lot. Sondheim stitches his themes everywhere. I'm a thematic guy because themes really give a show its character. It's its own character. Outside of the characters that are written into the show, the music takes on a life of its own and has its own character, can stand on its own merits. That's what's cool about themes. And you don't get that much in theater today, which is why stuff like this is fucking good. So listen to just the piano part of this. You have all these bass notes just falling, so it doesn't give you a solid rock to stand on. It's very flighty, like a bird. Ring dove and robinette, is it for wages singing to be sold? Now, this is not, this melody isn't. It's up a step from the original, but in the same key. So the piano parts kind of got the same stuff going on. 
But the melody is different. It's up a step. He transposed the whole melody up a step, which sets it off from the main thing. So Joanna's fucked, man. She's got shit going on, and it shows in the music. Ring Dove and Robinette, is it for wages? Singing to be sold. Have you decided it's safer in cages? So now, the piano part now joins her in the key that she's actually singing in. Larks never will you know when they're captive. This melody is very freaking important. And I will never see Joanna. This is what Sweeney sings in the Epiphany, friends. And you can tell sometimes kind of giving it to you and foreshadowing what's to come because... It says here, poco retard, which means little retardando, which means a little bit slower. When they're captive, teach me to be more adaptive. So it's quite interesting how, how that kind of marries itself in the epiphany when Sweeney is singing this later. Then, of course, like Joanna, she sings like a freaking bird. Now, don't you dare, Sopranos, take this up an octave. What I hear sometimes in auditions or in any performance setting, some, some people opt for this other ending. Don't do that. If I cannot fly, let me sing, is sometimes what I hear. The bitch is stuck in a cage. She is trapped in a freaking cage like a bird. If I cannot fly, let me sing. She's stuck in the cage. Melodically, it goes back to the same spot she keeps going back to. She doesn't get out of the cage by the end of the song. So why should the notes change to make it seem like she's free now? Because when you go up or change the melody, let me sing it sounds like she's now got out of the cage and now the story takes a different turn it's not what's going on sopranos get your shit together if i cannot fly let me she's still where she started sing. and then we go on to i believe it's ah miss I have sailed the world. So it's got a little bit of Joanna's theme in there with the, there's the bird. But I love Sweeney. There's so much we could sit here and dissect. Sondheim in most of his interviews has said that Sweeney is probably one of the easiest shows he's written. That has just come to him naturally. I hope you all have a good uh, day and I will talk to you soon. I hope you enjoyed breaking down the score. Subscribe for more. I'll see you later. Bye!